So you made the 3D model on SketchUp and now is the time to decide what's the best way to render it. You could go with realistic rendering, but it's very time consuming, challenging and often frustrating task. Alternatively, you could just use an empty SketchUp view, but it doesn't have the same kind of flair and artistic quality. There is however the third way, which is the combination of the 3D modeling and manual rendering to show your design in the best possible light. Hi guys, welcome back to this channel. My name is Alex, I'm an architect in London and on this channel we'll look at different drawing workflows to improve our design process. Now to be fair, there's a lot to be said about the art of 3D modeling and rendering because it's the way to bring your creations closer to the life. It's also a great way to kind of keep up with your skill development and bring your knowledge, your technical expertise to the same level as your peers. However, over the past decade, everybody started using rendering as the main tool to convey design ideas. And the problem with using rendering all the time is first of all, it's more difficult to stand out from everybody else because everybody else is using rendering. And number two, it's a bit like using a sledgehammer for a nail. It's a simply an overkill in most cases and it's completely unnecessary. Now, in most cases, when it comes to presentation of your design ideas, you only really need an indication of texture, materiality and light. So how do we actually go about the manual hand rendering? Well, it kind of boils down to three key stages. So the first one is outlining, the second one is balancing and the third one is texturing. Okay, so now let's dive into Procreate to explore how to do this practically. Alrighty, so now we're in the iPad and for this we're gonna import our 3D image. We'll tone down the opacity a little bit, enough so I can barely see it. I'll also turn on the perspective grids just to give me a little bit of guidance as I develop the drawing. It's not totally necessary since we have our background image but I just like to have those lines there just in case. Create a new layer on top that I can trace over so that I can switch off the background layer when I'm done. So now it's time to adjust my pen size and I chose my pen size to be roughly of the size of a gel pen which for the purposes of this drawing is quite fine. Normally I would go with a little bit of thicker line just so that I don't get into detailing every single bit but since we're texturing this drawing and we go in a bit more detail I'll choose the gel pen size and then I'll start outlining the building which is basically following the background image. At this stage it's also important to establish the technique. I'm using a little bit of wobble in my lines for artistic quality and I separate my lines whenever is necessary with the space to give my hand a little bit of break. You'll notice as well that I save time by pulling lines that are going into the same direction at the same time. This is simply a technique I learned that makes my drawings a bit more efficient. Okay, so now that we have outlined our building and gave it the first pass, the second pass is all about balancing the composition. First of all, I will switch off the background layer and I'll start adding the context. When the context is added, I'll give a little bit more detail to the drawing by adding these timber lines and the brick lines for guidance so that they can guide me in the next stages. Now that I've done the background and I've added a little bit of detail, now it's time for shading. Now there's a lot of artistic license when it comes to shading but the way I approach the shading is I generally see it as a collage of different color fills. I use a very simple two-tone palette warm and cold. I've probably gone a bit overboard with the colors and therefore I'll tone down the intensity and then finally I'll add some background colors as well and tone down and raise the grass a little bit to give a sense of depth. Now at this point I could start adding shadows but what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna turn off the color fills for a second and I'll reduce my pen size and I'll start the texturing process instead. Now I'm not going super realistic here, I'm actually exaggerating these textures a little bit just so I can convey the feel and atmosphere of every material that I use in my scene. I'm basically using three types of texture, line for woods, for concrete and I also follow the shadow and the contrast lines. I also use hatches for shading and textures that are kind of in the darkness to the underside of the building or within the glazing. Vegetation lines can be less precise in the shadow areas and similarly grass textures can have a certain artistic wiggle to them. Then there are more precise lines for textures like bricks and slabs for the floor and that is basically it. When it comes to textures there's a very limited palette that can represent several materials but I think this limitation is actually quite interesting because it means that you just have to be a bit more creative when you apply them and they also give a sense of flair to the drawing. It has a certain style when these type of textures are applied onto it. After the texturing is done it's time to add a couple of emphasis lines. I'm gonna select a few key lines to anchor the drawing. I'll use these sparingly mainly across the high contrast and shadow lines. Okay so now that we've gone through the texturing and shading process it's time to review the composition and add some shadows and by 
adjusting the opacity, we can control the intensity of these shadows. I also think that the colors are a bit intense, so I will tone down the opacity down a little bit, and the same with texturing, just notch them down ever so slightly. Finally, I went through and fiddled with a thicker brush to add some highlights and some shadows, just for that additional kind of flare. And there we have it, the final piece. Okay, so the whole process took about an hour and 20 minutes, and there was about 20 minutes of modeling, which is pretty good result, I think, all things considered. So I would encourage you to try some of these methods yourself, because it's one of the easiest ways to stand out in a crowded market, which is full of 3D renders. Everybody's doing it. And it's also guaranteed to save you time, because you don't have to deal with all that technical stuff that goes into renderings and also the post-production. Now, I am launching a weekly newsletter that will be focusing solely on the drawing so if you're interested in kind of improving your design process, making your drawings look better and exploring different ways you can design, then uh, please check out the link in the description below and sign up for my newsletter. Um, I hope you enjoy this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.